Nityanam guys, let us stand for Hinduism and expose the anti-Hindu concepts. Yes, that is the theme. I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam. Another powerful cognition I realized. Service to Guru or Tapas. Like I mentioned in another video, Guru Gita says that service to Guru is the highest level of Tapas. It is there for us to realize our blind spots and to complete them. Engaging with the Guru is not you becoming a slave to somebody else. No. The purpose of tapas and service is to get punya, of course, means good karmas, to facilitate the path. But it's basically to allow you to experience yourself, your depth, complete what needs to be completed and realize that you are the ultimate. And the Guru is a support in that because the Guru has successfully done it. Because he has successfully done it, he can guide you properly so you don't get lost. It's like you're trying to cross a forest without a map and you cross a forest with a map. You'll be faster with a map. Why? Well, because you have a map. And that's the purpose of the map. If you want to cross the ocean of samsaras, the delusions of the world, then you need a map. Guru is a map. If you have the right understanding and the right cognition of what is Guru, who is Guru, then there is no question of following and all that kind of being a slave to and, and, uh, and to stop losing your identity and your individuality and who you are and becoming a zombie for a person. This is all this is movies. This is what we see in horror movies. This is what are fed. This is what we feed the children and this is what we grow into. This is a stupid, stupid con thought currents which needs to be discarded. We are not, we are consciousness. We associate ourselves strongly to a certain identity and that is the, because of the karmas we cherish. You know, I am like this, I am like that. Uh, if you don't allow me to be who I am, I am suppressed. And when I'm suppressed, it is not good. Being suppressed is not good. Hare, nobody is suppressing you. You are suppressing you. We are consciousness. Consciousness is everything. Consciousness can play any role at any moment. It has no preference. Oh, I like red, I like blue, I prefer red and blue. No. We, when we are stuck, are like, no, I am like this. I, that's who I am, that's all. Uh, I mean, that doesn't mean you cannot have your own flavor. But you are much more than that. If you decide to cherish that, if you decide to be okay, this is the kind of identity I want to establish myself into, no problem. Conscious decision. You, decli you decide, you declare, and you start to live that. But in the whole process, or at any point of time, you have to remember that you can be otherwise. You don't have to. It is your conscious decision. Like that, we need to constantly realize that everything we do is our conscious decision. When we constantly remember it is our conscious decision, we are always powerful because we know, oh, I decided. If Swamiji is my guru, it's because I decided. Not because I was forced to. If I decide to wake up in the morning, it's because I decided to wake up in the morning. Not because I'm forced to. Yes, when we have the guru-disciple relationship, we have to, the purpose is to restore the integrity. If I decide to have Swamiji as my guru, it's my decision. And I become a disciple of Swamiji. Swamiji is sharing, you should wake up at Brahma Murta. Because Brahma Murta is the time where the vasanas are happening in the inner space. And at that time, you should be awake, you should not be sleeping. Then, I should align to Brahma Murta. I decided to follow Swamiji in the first place. If I was not agreeing with what Swamiji was saying, then why would I decide to follow him? No, I decided to follow him. Why? Because I think he makes sense. Or I, I feel that yes, he can bring me where I want to go. He has the space I'm looking in. 
Then he's telling me, you should wake up at Brahmurta and I should be okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he knows. That's why I'm following him. Otherwise, I wouldn't follow him. So there's a lot of blind spots that anti-Hindu forces bring to destroy the relationship between disciples and guru. And uh, we sometimes we fall for it because we also have blind spots. And sometimes these blind spots get exploited, get exploited, not sometimes. Anti-Hindu forces, they exploit these blind spots. They play in the gray areas because we don't have the awareness to see what's going underneath. And the worst thing that can happen is we drop the connection with the guru. Then you lose your map. It's like you're going through the forest with your map and then suddenly you have, I don't know, something that comes up and you feel, ah, I don't need the map. You drop the map. Okay, now you're in the middle of the forest without the map. Now you have to figure it out on your own. It's going to take time and you most likely, you maybe will never make it. You might turn around, round, round, and then you might die or get killed by wild animals or whatever. So, see, these people, they're exploiting these blind spots. It's so, it's so, <laughs> so, so silly. So silly. So silly. So that's what I want to share in this video. Guru is the map which allows you to realize your consciousness. We don't need to be too attached to things. If we decide to consciously walk a path, no problem. But you should always remember you consciously decided to walk that path. Don't start walking and say, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to go there, but I'm walking. You're only controlling your legs, yeah? <laughs> You're only giving instruction to your legs to move forward. If you don't want to go there, just stop. See, this is simple. It's so simple, simple reality, simple understanding. But sometimes it seems that uh, we don't see it. We don't see it. So yes, Guru is a blessing, guys. So be careful. Hindu forces exploit blind spots. And end of the day, they don't want, they don't want to help you. I've seen sometimes some people <laughs> in the comments, they're like, whoa, you know, they're, they, they're giving me advice and they're telling me at the end, this is, uh, I want you, I want to do good to you. But the problem is that after that comment, I never hear about them anymore. So I don't know what kind of good to me they want to do other than giving me a nice word for the 15 seconds of my life that I'm going to spend reading their message. So yes, it's not about that, guys. We have to see the reality. We have to be real. We have to see it. It's, it's obvious. It's, it's in front of us. It's obvious. So we have to see it. Hinduism is that. Hinduism is a blessing because Hinduism allows you to see that reality and remain powerful and not fall for this confusion and these blind spots and continue to cherish fear and greed, which is not the ultimate experience. Of course, there's a process. We take different bodies. You know, we took animal bodies before human bodies. So naturally, an animal body is not going through the same experience of consciousness than a human body. Even a, a human body which just came from being an animal, the first, first human body that, the conscious, that, that, uh, that, that, that piece of consciousness is taking or that biomemory is taking, I mean, they don't know. They have to experience the human body. They're experiencing for the first time. So naturally, they will not have the same kind of relationship with the mind, ideas, and body they, because they're exploring. It's the consciousness is exploring that dimension of itself. So Hinduism is a blessing because it allows us to experience us as pure consciousness. And any thought current which is against the relationship between guru and disciple, which is the main foundation of Hinduism, is an anti-Hindu concept. And these concepts has to be dropped, discarded, burnt, uh, thrown away, dug and buried and dismantled. And you get what I mean. It has to stop. So I thank you guys. I'm going to close the video here. I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, subscribe, like, share with your friends and stand for Sanatana Hindu Dharma. These principles are amazing, empowering, real, and they need to be heard. We don't need more shlapatas that does all kind of shlapat shlapat. The, pro the problem with shlapatas, they will use Hindu idea words. They will not understand what it means. They will use a word and they will make it look bad. And then people will think, oh, Hinduism is stupid. Are Hinduism is not stupid. They're stupid. Now. It's not Hinduism. Nityandam, guys, nityandam. I welcome you all with my love and respect. 
let you all open all your three eyes om nityananda